Hi and hello to everyone. In this video, I am going to give the syllabus overview for the subject 18 EC 308 Basic Electronics Engineering. This is a subject studied by the third semester mechanical engineering graduate students. Myself, D. Mani Bharati, working assistant professor at the department of ECE. This is the subject at Government College of Engineering, Salem. Welcome to the lecture. Before getting into the syllabus, I want to say what is the necessity to study this subject. You know, in mechanical engineering, recent subdomains like mechatronics, robotics have evolved. The, the main purpose of this evolution is nowadays people cannot say mechanical engineering is independent of EC or EC is independent of mechanical. There is a necessity where two or more departments has to work together. For that, we have to have some knowledge. Nowadays, there needs a synergy between each department. For that very purpose, this subject and syllabus has been framed. This subject will introduce the basics of electronic components and circuits. You would have known what is the necessity of electronic components. If I ask what is electronic components, people may immediately say, sir, some transistors, diodes, yes, those things, and some basic circuits. As well as we have to know some knowledge on digital electronics fundamental right because all devices use no all digital devices your mobile phone laptop your tv are all digital nowadays and integrated circuits everything is integrated right when it is integrated it becomes a very smaller in size then the other purpose is to give some applications in communication engineering domain right this is in one of the fastest growing domain communication engineering you know you know the, the rapid plural proliferation of uh, mobile phones and other satellite devices and their applications we are enjoying those applications will be given in this subject we will be studying about the quantitative way right we will be having a block diagram approach and we will be explaining those things right it's up to you to dwell deep into these concepts okay the subject is basic electronics engineering so this is the first first unit first unit will be introducing the semiconductor diodes and application in this, uh, we will be dealing with an introduction to resistors, inductors, capacitors and their color codes. Right? You know, these are the, some passive components. Right? In electronics, we say some passive components, active components. This is a passive components which is used, you know, resistor. Resistor is to resist the flow of current. Conductor is used to store the current. Capacitor used to store the voltages. Right? And it, these three devices have the relation between voltage and current. Those relations and how to identify their values, specifications, those things we'll be seeing. Then we move into semiconductors. You know, semiconductors, this is a magic device, right? So, because we know insulators, conductors, right? And then people frame that, uh, why not a semiconductor? A conductor between, um, between the insulator and conductor this is called semiconductor because all electronic component the mobile phone you have in your hand or the laptops you use or television all are made up of semiconductors and semiconductors is property some basics regarding its properties those characteristics will be seeing and from semiconductor will go into some applications like uh, pn junction diode right diodes you know it's a two terminal device p and n will be two other two terminals it's an anode and cathode we'll be seeing its characteristics and we have in another application diode called zener diode zener diode is an application specific diode it is for voltage regulation application right we want to regulate a voltage to keep an voltage constant we have to go for zener diode and you will look at its characteristics then we'll move into photodiodes right of course uh, some renewable energy concepts people will be knowing that uh, yeah, if for the input you know solar panel is there what is the input input is light output is current right similarly for a photodiode too input is light output is current and we you know leds light emitting diodes right then we move to some important applications like a half wave rectifier full wave rectifier then full wave rectifier with capacitors capacitor filter okay because in household power supply right the power supply you take take from your plug point are all ac alternating we want to convert into dc for that what we need we need some rectification we want to change the alternating into a direct one okay or some constant one for that we go for some using some diodes we will make some rectifiers something called half wave one full wave rectifiers and even that full wave rectifier, you won't be a giving constant thing, constant voltage. For that, we go for a capacitive, capacitor filter. There are so many filters, right? I will introduce one or two filters for you. Then moving to the second unit, 
The second unit will be going to um, look at the BJT, bipolar junction transistor, bipolar, two polars, two polarity charges, right? Both your uh, holes and uh, electrons will take part in its uh, operation. Um, and uh, what are the terminals? I say base emitter collector. So I say common base, common elite, common emitter, common collector configuration, right? For each configuration, what is the input? How it is related to the output? And if I change one parameter, one voltage, what happens to the another current? Those relations we'll be seeing in the bipolar junction transistor characteristics. And particularly, we are interested in CE amplifier, right? Because in common emitter transistor circuit is primarily used for an amplification application, right? So we'll be dealing specially with uh, some circuits with CE amplifier. Then we have a concept of feedback. You know what is a feedback, right? What is a feedback? See, if something is from the output is given to the input, that is called feedback, right? This is a very essence of a control system. Okay, if the output I can see and I am can uh, give it to the input, I can correct the output change, right? Okay, that is called feedback. Output is fed to the input. And negative feedback means output is output is subtracted with that of the input. Negative, right? And uh, negative feedback, there are four four possible combinations are there based on the voltage and current. Uh, here we are going to specifically look at only two things like voltage series feedback and current series feedback. But I will give all the four feedback circuits to you. But in the syllabus, we have only voltage series feedback amplifier and current series feedback amplifier. This is regarding the unit two. The third unit, we move into digital electronics, right? As I said earlier, digital electronics is an um, very fundamental and elementary uh, subject nowadays for any department, right? In your, uh, maybe in your higher secondary book also, you will study these things. But again, for a refreshment, since we have a lab course parallelly running, uh, theory also we are studying, right? Okay, in digital electronics, we, first thing we have to know something about the number system. Okay, what is number system? See, in real world, what numbers we are using? We are using the decimal number system okay but computer can understand only binary is ones and zeros that need not be only the binary number system we have some numbers called octal hexadecimal okay but those things you should be knowing how to how we have to convert from one number to the another decimal to binary conversion or decimal to octal conversion or hexadecimal conversion those things will be studying in the binary number system then moving to the logic gates right these are the basic building blocks right to design any see assume uh, you have a Intel i7 core i7 processor. What's what is what will be inside it? If you ask, I can simply say gates. Okay, what are the gates? Or you know, these primary gates like um, um, NAND and NOR gates, they are called universal gates, right? Using these gates, we can realize some other gates like uh, NOR gate, OR gate, AND gate, XOR, XNOR. Okay, these are the finite gates we have, and we'll be seeing what are the gates, what are the universal gates that is your NAND and NOR gates. Then using these gates, we can build some circuits, right? Some such something is called combinational circuit. What is combinational? I will be combining, okay, combining the logic gates to form a circuit. Okay, we'll be, we'll be studying this only two things like half adder and full adder. Give you a taste of the circuit, but these are not the only two uh, combination circuit. We have half subtractor, full subtractor, encoder, decoder, multiplexer, demultiplexer. So many circuits are there, right? But as an introduction, we'll be dealing only with these two things. And if you wish, I can give you some other combinational circuit if you wish to learn. Okay, I'll be providing you. Please don't worry about it. Then we'll move into something similar to gates. We have something to remember, remember something, right? To remember something, we have we need a device called flip-flop, right? Flip-flop is a device which can store one bit of information. Okay, assume you have a 64, I mean, I can say like one gigabytes, one GB, one gigabytes, one gigabytes uh, pen drive. You are having one gigabytes pen drive. What is the meaning? One giga is, I can say, ten power nine bytes. Byte is eight bit. Okay, so eight into ten power nine. Okay, these many bits are there in your pen drive. Fine. So one gigabyte pen drive will have these many bits. Okay, and a flip flop, one flip flop will have one bit of information. One bit of information. One bit of information, right? And you know this flip flop is used to store the information such that to to remember a circuit, right? Assume you are designing some counter circuit. You are having a device installed in your doorstep of your classroom to count the number of students visiting your class, right? As in the first student is coming, the count will be one. The next student is coming, now the count will be increased to two. 
okay how it is from 1 it is increased to 2 that means it has to remember 1 then only when it sees the student coming inside the class it will be increased to 2 now the third student is coming into the class the sensor will sense and it will be increased to 3 okay in that case we have to remember already what is now the you know the output is 2 the next output should be 3 so the next output would be 4 for that we, we need such devices are called flip flops flip flops are sr jk d and t flip flops okay and I will be introducing some, since we have a laboratory session also, I will be introducing some sequential circuit you build using these flip-flops. Then we move into an unit 4. This is an integrated circuit. Uh, integrated circuit, so you are specific, though you are using, we studied about BJT, this op-amp. Op-amp is nothing but your operational amplifier. Using operational amplifier is one of the fantastic device. Anyone can build a circuit very easily. Electronic circuit, you say any circuit, I can build using op-amp. Okay. Now, I'm going to study in plus two also. There's inverting input and non-inverting input. Two inputs are there. Based on that, I will building some applications like voltage follower, adder, subtractor, integrated differentiator. Okay. So this is very, very, very important unit. This is the mandatory unit or very essential unit. You should be very thorough to build some any projects or applications in your course. Okay. Electronics means you should be very thorough with integrated circuits. I will definitely guide you in this thing, right? Okay. Then we have to convert the analog input to digital and digital to analog right as i said earlier computer will be working with the digital but as a human being everything we see we can sense only in analog right so digitally you are watching a digital movie right it is telecast digital wise but still the content will be uh, the content you can see is analog right so digital should convert to analog and to store something analog should be converted to digital for that we will be using some techniques like r2r weighted resistor weighted resistor type techniques right Similarly, for analog to digital, we have one technique like successive approximation flat flash types. There are some other techniques also there, but this is for mechanical engineering students, we will be having these two techniques only. Okay. For digital analog, we have R to R unweighted resistor type. For analog to digital converters, let me say, I can simply say this is DAC, digital to analog converter. This is ADC, analog to digital converter. Okay. So for this, we have successive approximation and flash type. We move into the unit 5. In unit 5, we will be uh, helping you in some applications in communication engineering, right? Okay, for that, applications like radio, TV, microwave, satellite, fiber optics, these are all based in communication application. Then, for transmission of communication signals, we have something called amplitude and frequency modulation. What is modulation? If you, if you are changing something, that is called modulation. If I am changing the amplitude, Okay, with respect to the message signal of, a, of the carrier, then it is called amplitude modulation. If I can change the frequency of the carrier with respect to the message signal, that is called frequency modulation. The purpose of modulation will be knowing that, see, communication, you know, what is the brilliance of communication? We are enjoying the live telecast, which is telecast, uh, match telecasted at uh, uh, England uh, World Cup. We are watching our near home comfortably. This long distance transmission is only possible because of this modulation. Okay. But modulation is not possible, right? Okay, you'll be seeing those things very clearly in the course. Then what about the course outcome, right? I assure you that, I promise you that, I will help you to learn these things, right? To understand the concepts of electronic components and circuits, to understand the concept of digital electronics, to gain the knowledge of integrated circuit, to understand the fundamental concepts of communication engineering. Okay, these are the course outcome. I assure upon completion of this course, the student will be able to Okay, you would be able to, if you learn the course well properly with me, I assure you that this all course outcome 1, course outcome 2, course outcome 3 and 4 will be definitely met to you. Okay, right. And some textbooks we have referred, right. David Abel, RS Seda. See, I am particular. This is since your subject is having, a, okay, see, entire English electronics communication has been compressed into five chapters, right. But um, we need two to three books to learn this thing. First thing. This uh, Robert Boyle study will help you in uh, semi first chapter semiconductors, BJT, OPAM. Okay, for communication, I have to refer to some other book. It's not available here. I will then and there I will refer you. Okay, for digital electronics, you have to go for uh, something called. Uh, uh, you can go for uh, Morris Mono. There some books are there, right? For this, this book will be covering the three chapters. Out of five units, three units will be covered by this book. Remaining two of the like digital electronics and electronics communication engineering application, fifth chapter and all, I will have to give the material for you because we don't have a single book covering this entire five units, right? Okay. But these are some reference books we have listed out, right? Wish you a happy learning. Jai Hind.